Great. Yo, what's the crack, people? So listen, this is Friday Live at 11. And for everybody who is watching this back in the podcast, I just want to tell you who we've got on the show here. We've got Paul Murray on us today, who uh, come up with this title last night. Pissed off, <laughs> Belfast PT tells you why Insta Famous Trainers slash mentors are full of shit. What you need to do if you want to play, if you want to own your own gym and play by your own rules, does that sound fair enough, Paul? Does that explain it right? That sounds pretty, pretty accurate to me. Okay, so uh, how come you get known as the pissed off PT? Like, what, what the fuck is this? Because your podcast or what? Ah, uh, because I'm, I'm just pissed off with the industry. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm a, what you would call PT marmite. Yeah, they love or hate me, but I've got an opinion about something, and I'm not scared to share it. Right, sweet. So basically, you sort of say, uh, let's say you say what people are thinking, but are maybe too afraid to come out and say it for themselves. Yep, basically. Deadly. Okay, well, uh, tell, tell these people who you are and what the name of your business of the name of the business you own now. What, what, what who are you? What's the name of your business now? Okay, Miss Paul Murray I own Primal Strength and Movement in Lisburn in the Norty. We're in Norty, Sean. Actually, no one's going to understand the word we're saying. Oh, I'll put some titles in this. I will. We will put some titles in this later. <laughs> All the cultures down there are going to be going, what are these fucking already saying? I'm not going to have a clue. <laughs> but um, yeah, I started Primal Strength and Movement uh, actually three years this April. In one month today, it'll be three years. Uh, when we when Iron Fifth closed in 2015, I think it was, with Big Nile and everything, and, and Stephen Bell and me McTaggart, I went to train with Nile for a year just to get myself settled up. And then once the opportunity came along, myself and Dan McCaffrey, No Limits Fitness, we yep. said we had a bit of discussion and we started Primal. And then December last year, December 2017, I bought Dan out. Now it's my own business and 100% me. Okay. Well, this isn't your first business either, Paul. Sure, it's not. I mean, like, can you give us a bit of a background? How long you've been in the industry and what, what sort of iterations or, or, or generations you've been through in fitness? 2007 I started um, and it was just literally MMA so I was just one of these before before MMA became cool and it was like there was you're allowed to headbutt each other in the, in the ring and every, in the cage and everything um, I was involved in that and I trained with Davey Patterson in what was then Progressive Combat and I decided that after five or six years of training with Davey I wanted to open my own place in Belfast because he was not him so I just, I got my black belt off Davey, opened me own me place in a, le- in a local leisure centre. And after two years of doing like four nights a week in there, I decided to make the move to uh, an actual full-time facility. So it was through love of just the sport. And to be honest, I've never done a PT cert in my life. I just done the courses that I thought I needed in order to help my fighters improve. So for me, it was mainly kettlebells at that stage. Right. And, uh, because because David got me into kettlebell training, and I progressed from there. Just done what I had to do, without any guidance, without any knowledge, and that's where I met you. Sure, was the first time I met you, was up in yeah. Fairy Academy Ireland. <clears throat> that's right. And, and it's just it's just grown from there. Just I've made more mistakes than most PTs will ever make in their lives. I was I was part of that crew of push to failure. We used, I used to put a bucket in the middle of the room and let people vomit in the bucket and just go right now, get keep going. I was just that that ignorant attitude, you know, back in <laughs> back in the day when absolutely no one had a clue what you're doing. I was like, it was the original go hard or go home sort of mentality. And then I started getting to the strong first element of kettlebell training and realizing the strength training. There was there was better ways of training and just through trial and error, educating myself to the point I'm at now. Right, so that's a lot. Like that's a lot of years, and you've had a lot of gyms. I mean, has there been failures along the way? Did everything go the way you wanted? Absolutely, I don't think anything's going the right. I think this is the this is the first year things that went right for me properly. It's like I was a, I'm a good coach. I was a shit business owner until I actually met you and started getting the face off here. I had no idea what I was doing. I was I was that. In fact, we were talking about it the weekend. I was very like Jason, where the idea was. The more courses you've done, the better. But the more I look back at it, the courses I was doing was for ego. It wasn't for it wasn't to benefit my clients because I never really thought like that. It was like I want to do this, I want to do that. So just I done it, but I never really focused on the on the purpose of what I was doing, which is building a business. So I love coaching. Coaching's my bread and butter. 
but it was more it was I was doing courses just to do courses and almost to get almost to get an egg a virtual wank off of the other PTs. It was more it was more about, you know, the ego for me. And I was only only last only on Saturday we were talking about I was gonna do MNU until you actually proved me about it and said why? Do you know it was always about see you later folks? It was all about it was all about me wanting to have more knowledge and not actually understanding that the courses I should be doing should be in in line with who I'm coaching and is it going to benefit the clients I've got? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what that's why I've been doing it for geez, I don't know, twelve years. I've been doing courses for twelve years now. Just going through every course you never think of. Holy shit. <laughs> well look, well you own primal strength and movement now and like you're saying there, you've been through generations of every fad you can see in the industry you've got loads of things wrong to this point where you are now and i suppose you would probably say now you're doing things the way you would have wanted as a coach 100 percent. but what does that mean like what's what makes primal strength and movement different to every other gym like what's the mission what are you guys doing i want to help 40 year old guys build a bit lose a bit and get a bit and become a superhero to their kids they're ready to believe they are that's that's my tagline it's, it's, and anyone who knows me knows and my videos, that's who I mean that. I don't care if I offend people. I don't care if certain sexes. I don't care if women get annoyed. I don't care if young guys get annoyed. I don't, I don't care. The, my message is the men in and around 40, maybe bit over. And that's all, I, that's all I care about talking to. So a lot of people don't like what I say, but usually the people I don't like, don't like what I'm saying are females or younger guys because... They don't get me. They don't understand what I'm talking about. And that's fine to me because I'm not worried about offending people because they're not my target market. We've got females here. We've got guys in their 20s here. And they've all got the certain attitude that I look for. But when it comes to sending a message out there, I just target my demographic and nothing else. I'm a 40-year-old dude. Well, I'm a 41-year-old dude. So I know what 40-year-old guys go through. I know exactly their problems. I know how they think. I know the issues they've got. So I just talk to them. And I think that's the biggest mistake trainers these days make. They want to be... I've done it for so many years. Yeah. I, I was doing it for up until about two years ago. I was still doing it. It was like trying to please everyone, but getting no one because my message was so mixed up and so... Do you remember the first day I went to the to the, the, the first uh, ever... I was the Ascension then. It was 10X or something. That's right, and yeah. You, you and Jason just... Oh, you stripped me apart. I hated just I actually... Was, <laughs> I built this thing called strength culture up and it was the greatest thing and I loved it. And then you were like, good shit. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> that was the older, more reactive Paul Murray, I think. You definitely do yeah. things differently now. But that's who I am though, but I but I'll admit that that's who I am. I would be if you if you say something to me, I ain't gonna snap back at you, I'm gonna attack but that fighter of me is gonna come out and I'm gonna attack you and I'm not gonna listen to what you say. But deep down it's went in the back of my head and then I'll go home and I'll think about it. And I'll sort of calm down a bit and then I'll go, right, okay, maybe they're right. And I'll apply it then. But you all you see me in the mastermind, how many times me and Jason go head to head fighting each other and it's just that alpha male thing situation where you're not gonna embarrass me in front of people and he's not gonna let me embarrass and it's like rah, rah, rah. <laughs> But you come back to it and you realise that everything being said isn't the embarrass you, isn't to put you down, it's to help you to think differently. And that's that's something that I still need. Twelve years in the game, and I still need people to challenge me. Do you know? And I still need people to see things from a different point of view, a different perspective. It's the coffee cup analogy, shall we say? Yeah. You know, and that's what helps you grow as a person. That's what helps you grow as a coach as well. That's you a know? fucking great point. And uh, here's the thing: like, we, we've called this like uh, the title of this show, which we came up with last night. Right? It was pissed off Belfast PT tells you why insta trainers or insta famous people mentors these kinds of people are full of shit i mean it isn't contained in what you've just said there is that yeah. the reason why yeah because listen the way i look at it is like the most of the people out there that don't have the confidence they don't know what they're doing and they're looking for guidance and they just see someone with a six pack and they automatically think to themselves that guy's got a six pack or that girl's got a six pack she looks like she's got a shit together she's happy look at the way and they, they attribute this look and what they're doing with happiness. And if they if they can if they can get somehow looking like them, they're going to be happy themselves. And they're going to. But they're portraying this. These guys are portraying a fake life. And from my experience, most of these Instagram influencers are miserable, uneducated, have no fucking clue what they're talking about, and are just desperate to get money. 
So they're putting up these programs that just the Belinda's big booty builder and fucking all these six pack bullshit. But people are so desperate for that that they don't understand the difference between a good quality coach and someone who's just hit it lucky with Instagram likes and followers or bought half the followers. So they automatically think they've got a six pack, they've got a program, they know what they're doing. If I do this program, I'll look like that. But it all ends up as how many people do you know have ever succeeded from an Instagram influencers program? No, I'm, I can't think of any. You've stuck me. I, I actually can't think of one. I think another reason, though, which is like something you touched on there, a lot of people that get sucked into becoming a social influencer are doing it because they actually they want to either you know, stroke their ego and they get sucked into the whole likes, shares, followers type thing. And they think that they're doing the right thing if they're getting loads of likes. They think they're doing the right thing if they're getting loads of shares. But actually, most of them that I've talked to have said, well, is that actually transferring the money in your bank account? I mean, are you actually making money here or are you just getting likes and shares? Because it, it's kind of like masturbation metrics. Yeah. And then, I can actually remember a conversation we had when I was in Iron Fit. I was actually phoned you and I said, listen, we've just lost Iron Fit. Iron Fit was, I think Iron Fit was too beyond its time almost. Yeah. We had, we had 25,000 followers at one point. And I can remember phoning you and saying, right, you said to me, 25,000 followers, great, right? Jesus, how much how much is making a month? And I was like, we're not. And you were like, what the fuck? I and mean, that was just the prime. We, we, at that point, we were focused on how many likes we had, how many likes a post got, how many followers we had. But there was no fucking coin. And as far as I can, as my experience, as far as I know still, no matter how many followers and likes you get, they don't feed your kids. It's that simple. Do you know, it doesn't matter how. I would rather have 10 followers and 10 grand in my bank account than have 100,000 followers and 100 quid in the bank account. But I think the social media influence and this this belief that, you know, everyone wants to be popular. And it's like you've, everyone's got the chance to be popular because Instagram and Facebook is just making it so so easy for people or believe it's so easy for people to make from follower that we're actually forgetting the purpose of what your job is. Your job is to, to build a business. That's you, yeah. you're, you're building a business something you're passionate about. But then we get too sucked into this getting likes and then people get sucked into checking their phone every 15 minutes. Is that post popular? Do people like that post? And they they're, they're take their mind and their eye off the ball of what your goal is. They get as many yeah. friends as possible and change as many lives as possible. Yeah, that's it. I mean, th that's a fucking cracking statement you just said there. And I think back in the day originally when you were going on with the, the, the strength culture thing and you were getting a lot of traction on stuff and we had to sit down and say, yeah, but Paul, how many of those people that are, you know, you, that you're getting traction with are actually converting to leads and buying off you? And you were like, no, well, not many. We went, well, then you're actually attracting the wrong people with that post. So this, just because you're getting likes and shares and followers, which can be great if they're converting and actually buying your stuff, it means you're getting the right kind of traffic. But if all you're actually tracking, the only metrics you're looking at is how many likes am I getting? Well, look, you could be a girl with you know a nice figure, and the only people that are liking your pictures are fucking 50-year-old creepy dudes who are not going to buy your shit. Like you? So, like me? <laughs> and you? <laughs> I'm not a creep. Well, <laughs> prime, prime example would you say there was, I done a video, a lot of people seen, that was like, reached like 150,000 people about CrossFit. It got massive engagement, like 40, I don't know, 400 and something shares, and I just ridiculous amount. But I didn't get one client from that video. That was just me doing a rant for the crack. Now, yeah. it got me good exposure, don't get me wrong, got me good exposure and got the page more likes. But I got a hell of a lot more actual physical money and, and income from a video that might get three likes. But it's talking to the right audience. Yes, but it's talking because to the right I'm audience. speaking to forty year old guys and what I'm saying to those forty year old guys is that hitting them, it's got those it's hitting their pain points and, and I understand exactly what they're talking about. But it, it's not going to appeal to a twenty five year old guy. It's not going to appeal to a, a female. So it's not going to get the reach that you know we're all we've all sort of been conditioned to believe that if you get this reach, you get these likes, you get this popularity contest going, you're going to make money. It doesn't it doesn't equate to that at all. And people need to understand that. I would rather have no social media and have a gym packed than have a packed social media and an empty gym. Fucking right. It's down to this simple question: Do you want to be popular or do you want to be profitable? Exactly. Because there are two different conversations, and there are even two different conversations that you're going to have on social media. You can say anything on, uh, 
on, on so anything you want to get traction. It's easy actually if you wanted to go out and get traction. In fact, you're fucking brilliant at it. Like you have a massive following. When you do the rants, like I've seen your things get towards the millions in views regularly. But I turn and say, I actually turn and say, like I do the rants for the crack. Because that's who I, it's, it is who I am, though. You know, you know me pretty well. And you yeah, know, yeah. I just like, I rant about everything. It's not like I'm just doing this for social media. I'm doing this because it is who I am. Yeah. I know I'm a grumpy bastard and I know I rant about everything. And I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm never, I'm never going to apologize for being me. And if you don't like me, you don't like me. But I don't do those rants in order to try to get get more following. I do those rants because it gives me happiness to fucking rant about something. It's just like, <laughs> it's my. Some people wank, I rant. <laughs> I just like to rant about shit and get it over, get it, get it out there and oh, get us all and dusted. Oh, but, shit. You know, I think, I think a lot of people, and then the other thing I think a lot of trainers do is, so I get, I get success. In fact, it happened a couple of times and I burst out laughing and I actually cringed a wee bit because it was embarrassing. But I was getting really good success but the way I was doing it. Just my, my personality, the way I am, and I just I go, oh, on all those videos. And then I seen some guy I seen two or three PTs doing exactly the same that I was doing, and I was going. They've just seen me. They've seen. They've seen me do this. They've seen the response I get, and they've in their heads they've thought themselves, "This is good. This is how I'll get traction." But the reality is, it wasn't their personality. It wasn't who they are, and they were trying to copy me, which Brilliant. means they're not. They're not being them, and that's yeah. what you need to be. I think every trainer has to have the balls to actually be who they are, and not try to copy everyone else because they see someone else getting success through something else it's not doesn't mean because someone else is getting success they're going to get it and I think that's what you need to, you need to focus I think a lot of trainers especially beginners in the industry need to just focus on finding who they are and having the balls to be who they are regardless of how many people hate them do you know yeah. like I've got more haters than the Lakers and I really don't care because the people who hate me they actually share my videos more than the people who like me, so they're doing me a favor. But yeah. you know, I don't care if they don't like me because they're never going to affect my life. They're never, and their opinion of me is none of my business. That I always say. So if they, they can slabber about me, they can do whatever they want about me. But at least I've got the balls to go and do these things and actually get myself out there and try to get try to get the people who I need to attract into my gym through my videos. And I think you need to have the balls to do that. You need to just go be able to say, right, this is my message. This is what I want to say. And regardless of what, just continue doing it. They get, I, we talk about consistency. I, yeah. haven't missed, I haven't missed one day's video since the 29th of April. So that's, I'm coming up to nearly a year, nearly 365 videos I've done every single day nearly, you know. So that, and it's that consistency and that message, continuously getting that message out there consistently is what's helped me nearly double the numbers of the gym. So what you've just said there is fucking incredible because like, some people are very, very afraid, and I know people watching this will be afraid to be themselves, like you said, and authentically stand up for what they believe in, even if they stand alone. That's a very, very hard thing. And like you said there, you had the balls to do that and then take the direction from us to say, okay, you're getting traction, but you're getting the wrong kind of traction. Steer your message in this direction. And then you spend a fucking year showing up every single day and then, how has your message changed? Have you got better at it after doing it in a year? Yeah, I, I, do you know something? I remember the first time, I, funny enough, the first one I done, the first video I done was uh, that got me to, that started this all off was one about life coaches. Okay. And you, you, you know about my opinion on life coaches, 25 year old life coaches. So, and I, do you know something? I had this video done three months. I am pretty confident. But I had learned my fear and my, my sort of like the thoughts that I was in my head to stop myself from posting this video for three full months. And then one day I just went, fuck it. And I up before I even didn't give myself a chance to think, I just uploaded it, press send and, and put it out. And the response was brilliant. It, like it wasn't brilliant compared to some of the other videos I'd done, but at that moment in time, it was like, I don't know, 9,000 people viewed or something, you know, in the space of very short space of time. And it made me go, holy shit. What I'm saying is actually liked by a lot of people or people are agreeing with what I'm saying. And I was like, well, maybe this is something I should explore a bit more. So I just kept on doing it. But I think at the like what I do is my videos, as my mindset changes, my videos changes, because my videos are just mainly my opinions on, this, on a topic. I don't actually plan anything, anything out. If something's triggered me, shall we say, if something's annoyed me, or, or I've thought of, or I've experienced something in the gym from someone, I'll just talk about it, because if someone else has done something or someone else is thinking like that, 
I'm pretty sure there's people out there who are experiencing the same problems as they are, the same problems I am. So if I talk to them, it's going to resonate with them. Yep. But, but the reality is there's going to be people thinking, he's a dick. But if I, if, I, if I allow myself to focus on them people, then how can I help the people I'm trying to help? Because I'm, I'm allowing fear to control me. And I think that's a big thing. Trainers, especially young trainers or, or just people starting out, they get intimidated by, you know, the thought of being around, like if, being around Jason or somebody like that, you know, who's been, been around the block and been in front of a lot of high level trainers. They're scared to actually speak up their mind because they don't want to look like a fool. And mm-hmm. that, but you, sometimes you can't look like a fool to, in order to, to get the people you need to be, that you need to get in front of you. Mm-hmm. I just think if, if that, that's the one bit of advice I'd give any trainer. Just say fuck it to everyone and just be yourself and have the balls yeah. to be yourself. If you can be yourself, you're going to get the people you're meant to train and you're going to be successful. Yeah, yeah, 100% agree. And I, I, I like what you said there about like, you know that when you speak your mind, the opinions that you have are going to resonate with a certain kind of people. And the people who think like you and you know, laugh at the same shit you laugh at and don't like the same thing you like, well, that's who you want in your business. You want clients like you that you're going to enjoy training. And the other thing you said there was, you know that like probably 50% of people are going to be like, he's a dick, but that's yeah. great because at least they're not going to come in and annoy the rest of the members in your fucking gym. Hundred Listen, I remember when, because da- Dan's, we all know how successful Dan is in his um, in No Limits, but Dan's class is 30-minute boot camps, female fat loss. wonder where he learned that. <laughs> <laughs> but so and Dan's really successful. And, like there's no doubt, there's no denying it. He's like he's absolutely Dan the boot camp man. He's he's killing yeah. what he's doing. Yeah. But it's my idea of hell. Now, 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 and this is not this is me being a dick again, probably because people are gonna say he's a wanker, but I don't care. My idea of hell is training over is, is training overweight women. In their in their like forties and, and who just I'm sure, sure overweight women's idea of having a trainer is definitely not you. Well. I think that. But I'm glad about that, and that's and, 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 and I, like I don't care about offending people about that. Yeah. Because it's the reality is I don't want them in my gym. There's there's we've got females in the gym, but they've got a certain mentality that I like, and that's the whole thing. It's a mentality thing. I yeah. I put my message towards men in forties, but as if you if you suit my gym, if you suit my if you can handle my truths. And you can handle being challenged a lot, then we're going to be suited. But if you're not, it doesn't. And I find a lot of women who need the arm around the shoulder and told they're okay. And you're amazing, Maggie. You keep going, Sally. You're brilliant. Fuck that. That's not me. And it never will be me. So those people, I try to repel before they even come into the gym because that's going to be an atmosphere. I want guys, I want mostly guys who are going to be in here and just pushing hard, but still have the banter and still be able to have the crack. And that's what I'm finding since I've done those videos. Everyone comes into my gym is that type of person. Excellent, excellent. Well, that, that's what comes down with the consistency of owning your message and doing it every single day. You get better at putting that message out. You get better at attracting the kind of people you want into the gym and repelling the people that you don't want. That's it's okay. I mean, that, yeah. that's definitely a hard thing for trainers. Who was it saying to me? Was like, someone said if you're if you're like everyone in the room or something you're in the wrong room or so it was some quote like that. You know, you can't, you, you're not going to be able to, if you're trying to please everyone, you're going to please no one. You've got to yes. and say, right, okay, this is who I want. And if anyone else, if anyone spits that sort of mold, brilliant. But if someone comes in and they're just like, he's the, he's a dick, I don't like him. Be, be happy to turn around and say, listen, no problem. I will give, when people come into the gym and I'll turn around and say, listen, I'm going to be honest with you here. I don't think you're suited for here, but here's a gym that I think you'll go very well with. And I'll give them a name to another gym and send them to that person because it's 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 better that they, they don't be here, and, and it's better that we leave on a better, on good terms as opposed to he's an asshole. Yep, I love that. Love that. Now another thing, Paul. I know that people that will be watching this, um, and, and maybe they don't recognize this themselves, but I know this happens that people get distracted by what they see on social media. They get distracted by people who are maybe getting that sort of fame and the stuff that they kind of feel they should have if they're to be successful. And then they actually start comparing themselves to people that they shouldn't be fucking comparing themselves for in the first place. And like you said there, these guys are copying you. And like you were doing these rants not to get clients. You were doing these rants because it's just what you fucking like to do. But they've decided, oh, that's what you must do to get clients. That Look, it's working for him, assuming that it's working. So do you think a lot of people get distracted into doing the wrong things because they're comparing and they get sucked in down the wrong fucking route? 100%. Well, do you know what I think? A lot of PTs get distracted because they don't actually know who they are themselves. 
Mm. I'm, I'm coming 42 this year, and it's taken me nearly 40 years to actually start being confident to who I am. You know, that, that's, and I think a lot of trainers, like me definitely, I was, I, like, I'm pretty open about my bullying and my suicide attempts and my depression, and I've been, I've never denied that, so, but I think that sort of mentality, it was a, it was a mentality that I had, and I was, I was always trying to be someone else because I was scared to be me. Gotcha. But when, you're, but when you're scared to be yourself, how can you how can you coach other people? How can you actually help other people when you're almost living a lie yourself? I I felt like I felt like I've been living a lie for so many years, and it's only been since I've had the confidence to step up and go right. This is who I am, and this is what I stand for, and this is what I'm gonna this is who I'm gonna market to. It's the ends I've got the success. So if you're watching other people and you're trying to copy those people, but those people aren't you. You're, you're going to attract the wrong people and you're never going to have success. And then you're going to start doubting yourself. And that's that knock on effect. You know, ha- not having the confidence to be who you're meant to be is going to attract the wrong client, which means you're always going to think yourself and if you're a failure almost. And you're going to have that continuous loop of getting clients, losing clients. Why can't I build a gym? How come he's got a gym full of hundreds of people and I've got a gym? I'm a better coach than he is. What's he doing better? And you're trying to copy their message, but the end day, their message isn't your message. Yeah, so it, it, it's funny. Everything you say, it always boils down to you as a person. The minute you can start accepting yourself for who you are and understanding yourself and understanding what you believe in, and start pushing that message out, I think that's when you're going to start finding that there's people out there who are going to be. I like this person. I want to train with them, yeah. and you're going to build that. For me, Prime is about a tribe. It's about building a tribe. Like my classes, it's full of banter. It's full of slagging. It's full of joking about. We work hard. Well, some of us do work hard. Some of, some of the guys, some of the guys are just here for the banter. This week, we just want to what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> do you remember Paul? His daughter drew all over his arms. Do you remember? Hey, Anna, yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, keep going there, man. But um, yeah, what was I was saying. I think that people need to just have the confidence to be themselves. The minute yeah. you start learning who you are, and you 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 learn to accept yourself for who you are. Then you, have, yeah. then you can have the confidence to be that person on camera, and that's when you start attracting. But I've, what I find a lot of PTs are, I, I find a lot of trainers, especially young trainers in their early 20s, they don't know who they are yet, and they're very insecure about themselves. They've mm-hmm. got a passion. They've got a real genuine passion about wanting to help other people, probably because the amount of trainers I've met that have got their own psychological issues. And I think a lot of trainers get into the, into the industry because they're so miserable with their own lives, they want to, they've experienced and they want to help other people better their own, better their lives. Yeah. So, but then I find a lot of them that they don't believe in themselves truly and they're always, I don't want to offend people. Well, I don't give a fuck about people, I suppose, but like the likes of bodybuilders and all that, they're, they're so insecure of their own bodies that they're always striving for perfection. And that, I think you just need that. If you're going to be a coach, you need to just use your, use your life experience and use what, you, what you've done in your own life to attract the right person and to help them push on through your own experiences. And I think a lot of people are scared, young kids, young guys and girls especially are scared to actually speak their own mind and talk about their own experiences in life. For fear of being judged. Yeah, for being judged. And I think I think that's their key. If they had if they just were to go accept the fact that there's going to be people laugh at you. When you say these things, there's going to be people laugh at you. There's going to be yeah. people think you're a dick, but there's going to be people who you will inspire. I've had a few people turn around to come up to me and say, Paul, see what you've done for me. You've saved my marriage. I've had three people turn around and say to me, I was going to kill myself. This is back in the fighting days more so. But I, I would be in jail or I'd be dead or I'd be a drug dealer or I'd be something if it wasn't for this gym, if it wasn't for the actions you took. And that's pretty profound for me. Like If, if I can have one or two people tell me that, that I'd change their lives. Oh, fuck me, that's so much better. The, the, to me, it's maybe it's a bit of an ego boost, but it, it makes you feel awesome when someone says to you, your actions have helped me completely change myself as a person. That's, that's, that's my point. And as soon as you start thinking more about the people you could help with your message and you start owning, this is really what I believe, and I'm going to do this video, this post, I'm going to do this picture, write this email, because I could potentially help one person. The, the more you can steer your focus in that direction, I think it's much more empowering because if we're always focused over here on the people that we could possibly piss off or the guys who could laugh at us or judge us or reject us, we're never going to take any action. And I think that's really, that's kind of what you're saying there, Paul, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Like, I, like you know, like I've, 
I'm, I'm at the point, like, I live in a van, you know, and I, like, you've seen my van, you've been in it, I, I just love it, it's my house. I've got the point in my life where I'm trying to minimise everything, and I'm the, the, the desire for more and more and more money isn't really my driving factor. But I think a lot of trainers need to actually be honest in sales and say, what do you want to be? Because a lot of people get in this industry to make money. We all get in this industry to make money as a business. But a lot of people want to actually just make a shit ton of money and that's fine as long as you're honest with yourself and go I want to make a shit ton of money and I'm going to try to do everything I can to make the money then be like that but don't be one of these people that are going about saying I want to help everyone I want to be I want to make yeah. sure I want to be Jesus Christ <laughs> you want to make money that's fine but be honest with yourself who you're, what your goal is to get into this in, in, this in the first place do you want to help people brilliant but mm -hmm. if you want to help people like we talked about it go to a charity Go, go to a charity event, but be honest and say to yourself, no, you've got to make money as a business. You've got you've got bills to pay. You've got maybe got kids to feed. You've got you've got to build buy a house. You've got you're going to have to make money, so you can't do everything for free. And you've got to be you've got to start to get comfortable with the fact that you're going to have to talk about money to people. I think that's a big factor for a lot of trainers in this, and especially me, I'm still like that. I don't feel comfortable talking about money. You, on the other hand, love it. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm, just, I'm just much more conditioned to it. I mean, like, I grew up in an environment where, you know, we put 75 grand seals every single day. That was just the norm. So, I mean, I very, from an age of 17, I had to get comfortable with that. But what, what shocked me the most when I came into personal training was that these people had the ability to help dudes in a positive way, but yet they were so afraid about having this money conversation that it was actually stopping them from having the impact that they could possibly have. And for me, I couldn't get my fucking head around this. And that's when I actually realized, shit, I can help a lot of PTs because what I have, they don't have. And what they have, I don't have. You know, it was kind of a symbiote, which is exactly why me and Jason get on well because he was a fucking incredible coach. Yeah. And I was like, dude, if you could just get comfortable with this money thing and doing sales, I mean, and he's like, nah. In the beginning, he was like, I don't want to do sales. It's dirty. So getting Jay over that is like, fuck, oh, look at him now. I mean, he's, he's an incredible dude. He's very, very popular. I remember sitting in your, I remember sitting in your um, table in your old house with Dante, you and Dante and me. And uh, we were fairly honored, I think, at this point. Because I, I, I threw, I threw, I, I tried to show you how cool my, uh, my, my phone was, the carbon camera. Look at my camera, it's brilliant. I can and smash my camera phone up. I remember throwing it, trying to act, this, this is an unbreakable cover, and smash my phone. But... <laughs> I remember um, we done this. We 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 discussed this thing, and it, we traced back my money problems to my mum and dad when I was six or seven years old. But I think about seven, and I had went to Mullet Moor, and it went on along the beach, and I picked up these big seashells, and right. I brought them home, and I went round the doors and sold them. I think for like five p for ice trays, and I had made like one pound fifty or something from all these, and I brought in my mum and dad. But look at the money I've made. And my mum and dad went, what? Go get that money back. They can't be selling shells. They got you. And that, we traced back that conversation. That, that, that's where my money problems originated from. I felt like we can't sell stuff. We were blocked, but it's always stuck in my head how blocked we were. We were still blocked, but I can remember that conversation. <laughs> and that, that's the sort of point that I started getting over. Well, it, I didn't get over at that point, but that was the sort of trigger to help me start developing my relationship with money as opposed to fearing it and thinking it was dirty, actually accepting that as fucking your woman says, who do you call it, Baron Katie says, it is what it is. You know, you've got to love what it is. We need money to live. We need, no matter how dirty you feel about it, your your kids need the food. You need food. You need shelter. You need a car. You need home. We live in a Western world. The Western world, money revolves around, uh, the world revolves around money in this country. But you know, I, I just think, I think it feels completely differently. Like for me, what I'm doing is like, I'm sharing information, direction, accountability, support, and guidance towards an end result that a person would never be able to get themselves. And that end result has the potential to impact them in a positive way. In fact, when you, when you knock over that fitness domino, it can impact other areas of your life. It can impact your energy, your self-confidence, your mental productivity, clarity. It can affect your energy, your fucking relationships with your wife and your kids. So if you change a dude with fitness, you change a marriage, you change a marriage, you change a family, you change a family, you begin to change a community. And I'm saying, like, do you not see that that is all a positive effect? And like, if you have the potential to impact somebody in that way, you actually have a social responsibility to share that information with them. So that, in effect, is the, the seals. It's just an exchange of information. So, do you know what I think is even matter? Well, the fact that I've spent over fifty thousand pounds on education courses. See, see, see for me to give someone else. 
extra like, thousands of pounds in order to better myself so I can help other people. But yet, as soon as I paid those courses and got all that knowledge, I was embarrassed or worried about asking someone else for money, even though I might have spent like two, three grand on a course. Mm-hmm. I was I was scared to ask someone for twenty quid for an hour's training session. Now I now I charge eighty quid an hour for a training session. <laughs> <laughs> Back then I was like I was like, I'll give you three training sessions a week for fifty quid. Now you wouldn't even I wouldn't even get out of bed for that. And that's not being disrespectful to anyone who can't afford that. It's just that the fact is I'm a you certain level. Can. I'm I'm a certain level trainer. I know my I know my I know my worth. And there yep. are trainers out there who can who who are starting out and that's what they need to charge. They need to charge maybe twenty pound a session or yeah. whatever it is until they get themselves established and get the experience. But you've got to have the confidence there, and you've got to have the, you've got to know how much you're worth. You've got to have this sort of value within yourself and go no, because I I've always said this. If I was going to die, if I was told I had a week left, I would not want to spend it with my kids. Yeah. So if you want an hour of my time, how much are you? How much is how much is that worth? Because at the end of the day, we don't know when we're going to die. This could be my last day on earth. I could be dead tonight. No one knows. So if I'm going to spend that, if, if you want an hour of my time, how much do I value that an hour of my life that I'm never going to get back? How much do I value that at? And at the moment, I value that at 80 pounds. So if you want me for an hour, I'm going to charge 80, you're going to charge 80 quid. If you don't want it, that's no problem. That's an hour I can spend with my kids. Yeah. So, do you know, that's the way, I think that's the way trainers have got to start thinking. They've got to ask themselves, what, how much do you value your life? If you had one week left and someone asked you for an hour of your time, how much would you? How much would you spend? Yeah, that's that's a fucking valuable hour. Yeah, you're right. That's but every hour is valuable because every hour we don't know when. Our, no one knows when that Grim Reaper's coming knocking, so we don't know how long we could we've got left. So why devalue your life? Why devalue every hour of your time to try to give someone help? And I, I know you're helping, but you, they're they're taking an hour of your time that you'll never get back. Get that into your heads. You're never going to get that back. You're one day you're going to die, and every hour you waste. Is going to be an hour that you could have potentially used to create memories yourself. <laughs> 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 just want to say here. Like I'm stealing an hour from this little creature. She's actually exactly. not. Well. Yeah, yeah. Like she's not well. So she, she couldn't go to Montessori this morning, so she's staying home with Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but you're making a very, very valuable point. Like, and this is the thing: as you get older, like we were all twenty year old and thought we knew it all as well, and didn't have kids. Your perspective and your value on your time and your life changes as you get older. It really does. And that's, I suppose you do have to be ready to hear the lesson you're saying. Like, cause it's, and it's a really important lesson. Yeah. But, but I would, I would love to be able to go back to my 20 year old self and, and sit them down and just go, right, here's what you're doing. Shut the oh, fuck up. Oh, tell me, what would you say to your 20 year old self? This is going to be, everybody who's listening, this is a fucking writer down here. Go. I, I would, I would, I'd fuck them over to tell myself, I would tell myself to, to stop fearing other people's opinions. Do what makes you happy, because that's too many of us are are waste so many years of our lives trying to impress and trying to please other people, but it makes us miserable in the process. Do you know, like today, like let's let's go real conspiracy theories. Everyone thinks you have to get a mortgage, you have to do this, you have to do that. I'm living the fucking van, and I have never been as happy in my life. This is why I don't train women because the two of them are just sitting out here gasping away, like. <laughs> Two of them just sitting chatting away. Denise, you want to be on TV? Come on, come on, be on TV. He's so loud. Come on, you might as well be on TV now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but that's, that's, the biggest, that's the biggest thing I'd say. Like, you know, be, spend the time pleasing yourself, pleasing the ones who matter, and stop trying to put up, waste time putting videos on social media to press people that don't matter. And the other thing is, stop trying to get likes from other personal trainers. Yeah, yeah. That brilliant. wrecks my fucking head. And how many of us wasted so many years? We put these personal trainers on as influencers on pedestals. And I know half these influencers and I go, you're a fucking cowardly bastard. You have no you have no idea. You have no balls. Everything you're saying is a complete lie and a fabrication because you're just you're not even that's not even who you are. You're just saying the sound bites that you need that you want other trainers to hear so they come and spend money with you. But it's not who you are really. And these then these trainers are going to are listening to what they've got to say. Who and I'll be pretty honest, most of these pay, most of these influence trainers are just regurgitating the exact same message they they've learned from their mentors who learned that from their mentors, and I call it multi-level mentoring. Like it's like juice plus for the nineties trainers and a lot of these <laughs> what it is. And that's what racks me because because they're in their twenty they're in their late twenties, early thirties, 
and they've got life experience and they know everything. It's absolute balls. They don't have a clue. But yet they're influencing so many other young trainers to waste mm-hmm. their time instead yep. of being happy with what they're doing. No, that's no, a really crack no. one. A lot of people are trying to impress. Actually, they're trying to impress other trainers. But I think a lot of them actually don't realize that the message that they're putting out is only going to fall in other trainers' ears. Like when trainers put up pictures of their fucking food porn, you know, like their food in plastic dishes. Look at these two girls here. They're, they're, they're all in bars now. Like, hello. What's happening, ladies? <laughs> they're being embarrassed. They're all scundered. <laughs> So like they put up, and this is because they, look, they simply don't know better. I was this guy. We all were at the beginning, but they're putting up like their squat PR and you know go harder, go home, beast mode, and then pictures of like their food and wee plastic containers. Like there is no client that that you or I would ever train that would see that as like what they want for themselves. Like I, I don't know any guy who's a CEO who is dying to put his food in a plastic container and eat out of it to get gains. No, I'll tell. I'll tell you right now. I- how many trainers out there really have a, a niche or really have an idea of who they see later girls, of who they want to train? Very few of them. They want everyone. So then they're, they're giving this message out to absolutely everyone, hoping they're just throwing like bait into the sea and hoping it's a mackerel or it's a cod or if it's a salmon or tr- they don't care what it is, they just want a fish. Whereas <laughs> I don't want fish, I want a salmon. So I, yeah. you, 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 it was your day. You actually, you told me a story. It was perfect. You want this bait, you want this, and you want this. That's exactly what you got to do. You've got to know who you're talking to, and you work backwards. What do you want? I want a gym. What do you want my gym full of? I want my gym full of overweight women in their late thirties, early forties. Okay, why the fuck are you posting up? Are you doing two hundred kilo deadlift? What woman overweight in her forties who hasn't had sex with her husband for fucking four years because she hits her belly is going to give a fuck about doing a two hundred kilo deadlift? They want to know. Can we lose weight? Can you get me and my husband back together again? Can you make me feel confident to look in the mirror? That's all they want. If you tell them to fucking lift a kettlebell and on one leg and swing a hula hoop around their head, if it makes them lose weight, they will do it. They don't care about your 200 kilo deadlift. So why are you posting up? That's that's a, that's a that's a wank off. You're just you're just trying to get yourself having a, a virtual hand job from fucking other trainers to say, <laughs> oh look how strong he is. Fuck, that's amazing. But the reality is. There's going to be some PT out there stronger than you who's going to go, that's my warm-up, so fuck. So, you know, that's what people need. To, that's what trainers need to understand. They need to have the cops go, right, this is who I want to coach and this is who I'm going to. So what that person want? You've done that drill, that's the avatar drill, and that was the most, I think, to this day, was the most valuable lesson I ever had was delving down as deep as humanly possible. I went down as far as, like, what podcasts to listen to, what movies they would listen to, where they'd go on holiday, what they want, what clothes they would wear on what day. I was just thinking of every single thing you could think of to find that perfect avatar, to find that right guy and talk to him because that's yeah. what you want to train. And if you do that, you're going, it's going to take time and it's going to, there's going to be a lot of failures and there's going to be a lot of self-doubt and there's going to be a lot of times you're going to wonder yourself, am I doing it right? Am, should I wear off this side? But you shouldn't. You just stick to what you're doing and have confidence that if you're doing it consistently and you're sending that message out over and over again, the right people will hear it. But if you do one video, if you do one video a week or you do one post a week and I do three posts a day, who and you're, we're both going 40 year old guys, who's going to get the 40 year old guy? You. Because, and even if that person doesn't, hasn't got Facebook or hasn't got social media, their friends do. And their friends, and when, and when they're drunk, having a beer, go, I need to lose a galley. Well, here, there's a guy called Paul Murray from Primal Strength and Movement, and he does, they're not going to say, here, John from fucking Clondalkin, who does one post every fucking month, you should go see him, because <laughs> they don't know who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the truth, you know, and that's what people need to understand. Just fuck what everyone else says. Go after your target market and go after them continuously. Be consistent with, if you're, I do videos, so I've said to myself, right, I'm going to do a video every single day, and that's what I do. Half seven every morning, my video's out. And that's what I do every morning, and it's consistent. It's on LinkedIn, it's on Facebook, and it's on Instagram. So I cover it all. So I make sure that I'm my message is out there. Just the front of mind, front of mind awareness. It's crucial, I think, especially if you're starting out and you haven't got the money for, for um, to sponsor posts. We, we, just, we discussed that, you know, how I don't really, I don't really put that much money mm-hmm. behind my post because I just be consistent with my message over yeah. and over again. Well, that's it. If you're owning the fucking news feed, I mean, you're doing pretty much the same thing because yeah. a lot of people have to pay 
to be on the top of the news feed. But if you're consistent enough and your message is strong enough and it's targeted to the right people and you're doing it, like you're, like you're just fucking showing up every day and you know your avatar, you know exactly how to talk to them. That's super fucking powerful. That's an authority that does that. I think that's what people need to do, you know, and I think they need to stop hiding, trainers need to stop hiding behind this bullshit excuses. I can't afford that, I can't afford it. We either, as you, you told me this, you've got to, you're, you're going to pay in either time or money. So you've got yep. to decide, are you going to pay money or are you going to dedicate more of your time? But the turn and say you can't do something is a lie. And I've, yep. I've spent enough years of my life telling myself that exact bullshit story. But the reality is, see as soon as you change that, you change your perspective and you actually go know something, Maybe I can do it. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll just try it, and you'll go for it. Maybe you get a few likes. Oh, okay, some people like that. I'll try it again. I'll try it again. I'll try it again. And before you know it, you're you're no longer fearing what people say about you, and you're actually becoming more authentic. You actually, you'll start just you'll you'll realize that when you see me on video, it's just who I am. It's just yeah. you know you know me pretty well. Yeah. You know that. How I talk in my videos is how I talk to you. Is how I talk yeah. to my kids. I curse them, my kids. I'm a nightmare for cursing them as bad as you. You know, I curse in front of my kids. Like, so I curse in my videos. And a lot of people don't like that, but that's okay because they're not going to like me when they come in the gym then. You know, just be, just have the confidence to do that. That's, yeah. I'm just going to grab a 20 year old, hit them head against the wall until they start realizing that, you know, who gives a fuck what other people think about you really? Like, it doesn't really matter, does it? But you know something that I think is really important? We, we said this, like you said, one of your biggest breakthroughs was when you were in a room with me and uh, Dante. And I suppose at that point in time, there was a few beers involved. But it was like, there's Dante. You know, he's a very successful guy. His company's 500 million. They're heading towards 750 million this year. You're in a room with the two And I'm in the room. Huh? Is that all? Yeah. That's all. <laughs> so like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not the smartest man in that room, and that's why I love being in a room with Dante when we're talking business. Because like, I'm learning from him. You're learning from me. I'm, I'm, we're learning from you. I mean, like, how important is it for personal trainers to put themselves in a room like that instead of getting sidetracked by these insta fucking mentors you talked about? <laughs> Let me tell you, right. I'll, I'll give you a bit of experience. Anyone who follows me knows that Andy Mac, and Iron Mac McKenzie, Iron Mac Fitness, whatever you want, is a good friend of mine. And I went over to one of his combined strength meets. And what I noticed was there was only two or three trainers had the balls, even though we all knew each other, there was only two or three that actually had the balls to ask him a question. So here we've got a really, really high level coach who's, who's there for you to ask questions to. But the fear of looking foolish, the fear of asking a stupid question prevents people from asking that question, which could potentially change your entire career. <sighs> That, that baffles me. Like, I was asking the most stupid questions about fucking rubber bands because it's like, well, why are you doing that? I, and it, it was something that I should have known, but I didn't. So do you know something? It wasn't a stupid fucking question. It was probably the most intelligent question I've ever asked because as soon as he gave me the answer, I was like, oh, right, okay. Now everything else, I know ties in with that. And I can, I can see it. I can do it different yep. go down. But if, yep. I had not, if I had just sat there and went... If I ask this question, I'm going to look like a fool and everyone's going to laugh at me and I've got this reputation and I need to keep my reputation before. You can't do that. You've just got to turn and say, I don't know this. He does know it. If I ask him it, I will know it and then I can progress myself. Mm -hmm. Have the balls to ask questions. If you're, in, if you're in the presence of a good trainer or someone who knows more than you, or a, 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 like how many questions they ask you about, about fucking business all the time because yeah. you've built more businesses than me. You've been more successful than me in that way. So... Therefore, you're doing something that I'm not. And if you're doing something that I'm not, then I need to know what you're doing because that way, once I know it, I can start a planet. And I'm going to fuck it up a load of times, as you've seen, umpteen times. You've pulled me on so many times. Like, I still will not do your fucking Ascension booklets. I'm just, I'm still too stubborn to do that. And you and Jason are always going, oh, you'll come around one day. Maybe I will. There's a possibility one day I'll go, ah, I need to do that. But at the moment, I'm going like, no, no, no. But, you know, that's probably me holding myself back, and I accept that. I understand that's my ego probably just going, or maybe it's my fear of what the fuck am I meant to do with this that's holding me back. But, if, like, you've got to grow. If everyone takes their own. I think everyone has to develop at their own speed. Their own time. Yes. But you've got to have the confidence that you've got to know when you're not developing and know when you've actually should own your shit. You know, stop lying to yourself. And that's why I think... That's why I've got you as a business mentor. I need, I need someone to hold, call me out in that shit because it's easy as a 42-year-old guy to go, I know it all. 
where I don't know it all. And I need to have someone to sometimes say to me, that's wrong. And that's why I've got Andy. Andy calls me out. He's not a, he's, he's a friend mentor, shall we say. Or he'll call me out. If I do a post, he'll go, that's shite. And you know what was shite. That was bullshit, you're lying. And I'll be like, fuck. Bastard, he's right. And I have to fucking end. But that, you need that. And you can't, be a, you can't allow yourself to be offended because someone's calling you out on your shit. You just need to do what you got to do. Lovely, lovely. I like that. So uh, I've written down the three points you made there earlier when we were talking about the advice you would give to your younger self. Stop fearing other people's opinions. Yeah. Number one. Two, stop trying to impress other trainers. And the third and last one is like, find your avatar and talk to him every single day. Get top of mind awareness. Yeah, 100%. If you do those three things, you're going to be successful. If you're going to get, you're going to have downfalls, you're going to have moments of doubt and you're going to have moments of failures but fuck me who name me someone successful hasn't been failed hasn't failed before i i think pretty much everybody feels their way to success <laughs> yeah yeah you have to fail because i i always tell people it's the fitness journey and that's the crazy thing as trainers we've all been through a fitness journey and you know you grow through the failures, through the self doubt, when you when you're hit with a weight you don't think you can do, and then the trainer you've got turns around and, and plans a program for you, and eventually you do a weight, you lift a weight you didn't believe you could po- possible. Fitness, uh, the, the building business is exactly the same. You're going to doubt yourself. You're going to think that can't work until you actually put a plan in place that brings you to that point, and then you realise, holy shit, I'm here. Like you, you told me that when we were done building that the funnel the other night. You were saying, okay, you got to storyboard it. You got to work backwards, and you got to before you even put it on the computer, you've got to have it on paper so you can see where it is. You can plan everything out and take those steps. And once you break it down to simple steps, it's like it's not as it's not as daunting yeah. as what am I like? You know what I mean? like? You all laugh at me how bad I am with technology when it comes to like funnels and shit like that. And I just go, ah. but as soon as you get something working, you're like, all right. That wasn't that bad. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And you yep. move on. You can, you, can, you can build from that. Deadly. I love it. So plan for success is probably your last one. Bonus. Plan for success. Yeah. It, it's mad. And what you just said there, it, like, I think every trainer will get this. If you wanted a 200 kilo squat, you would take stock of like, well, where am I right now? And what's the growth? What's the gap here? And then what's the program that's going to get me to that? I mean, business is exactly the same. The, if you use that analogy... Like, if you're starting out, it's like turning, starting out in business would be like having a 30 kilo squat. If you set yourself a target of 200 kilos in 12 weeks, you're going to flop. Yeah. You know, if, 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 you're, if you've got a 30 kilo squat and you want to hit 200, you've got to accept it's going to be a five year plan. And mm-hmm. like you're going to have to maybe, you're going to have to go, okay, well, my first target is 50 kilos. Then I thought it'll be 75 kilo. Then it'll be 100 kilo. Then I'll work up like that. And I'll do programs every 12 weeks to get myself an extra 10 kilos. And as you build, the, 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 as you're building it and you achieve these things and maybe you get knockbacks and you have to reassess you, you, you'll change the plan and you'll build another plan but that allows you to have the confidence through experience to gain the knowledge you need to gain and it's the exact same in business if you start if you start out somewhere you're go get go go ask her if you're serious about it go get a job in like a global gym and ask someone like myself you know someone who's established <laughs> can I come in and mentor can you can I come in and just can I do a wee mentorship program and gain more knowledge? Gareth, Gareth said to me, like, Gareth just left me after three years there. And he, in, in three years, he probably got about 10 years of practical knowledge and experience through, through just having me to correct them and show him the, the mistakes that I made so he doesn't have to do, make those mistakes. And as that, he's accelerated his growth by year. So you, you've got to, sometimes, we're so, so caught up in the money idea that you need to be paid for this where none of us actually want to be mentored and actually just say, you know something, maybe I need to give up a lot of my time here for the next year. I'm going to give up three nights a week just to go into that gym and I'm not going to get paid, but I'm going to gain more knowledge than my competitors right now. So in three years' time, they'll be here and I'll be here. Mm-hmm. And I think that, I think you need to, you need to, a lot of time you need to take away the money aspect of things and ask yourself, what is my goal? And keep the goal of the goal. The goal is to keep the goal of the goal, as Dan John says. Yeah. So your goal is to be as successful as possible. Well, what's the best way to assess? Copying others with success. So if you if you can find someone who's already done what you need to do or you want to do, then fucking go go reach out to them and ask them, I don't want to be paid. I just want to come in here and learn. Is that okay? I'd say most people will go, 
yeah, okay, not a problem. I'm going to get help yeah. for a while. I'm going to get some sort of, and there could be a possibility of a job down the line if you show your if you show potential. The trainer, the, the coach might go, fuck, he's good or she's good. I'll keep her on. These what, are, these are things that people need to to consider. It's not always about money, and I think because because the industry is full of like we're paid and any trainer, even like up here, if you're getting twenty quid an hour. Like there's people working in Tesco for seven fifty an hour, like and, and they support their families and that. So you're in a very privileged position when you think about like twenty two years old and you're getting twenty pounds for one hour's work. That's a lot of money for like there's 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 parents with three or four kids would give their right arm to have twenty quid an hour coming in every every hour. So you you've got a potential. So even if you're in the low end of PT twenty quid an hour is still a lot of money. So if you're prepared to invest, you invest more time to learn more, then you can increase that, and you're going to get thirty quid an hour, thirty-five quid an hour, forty quid an hour. But it requires you to be willing to invest time and actually accept that other people know more than you and you learn from them, as opposed to walking in and going, "I'm a PT, look at me," Do you know, and yeah. not be willing. That, that's I think there's a lot of trainers out there like that, yeah. but because the cream always raises the top, as you say in it. So, yep. uh, what's the one you say? What's the one you say? Um, about the feeding, you say like the bottom feeders or something. There's there's less room. That, I can't remember. There's there's something you said about bottom feeders, and there's yeah yeah fuck, I can't remember the quote is. It'll come back to me as soon as we finish this. I can't fucking remember that. I've said so many fucking things. Now. I've probably forgotten most more than I remember. Yeah. So and the, the other one was like it's always there's always less there's always less there's there's more room at the top or something like that. There's there's a few of those lines you've used, which is totally true. The more you invest in yourself. The more the ladder, the further up the ladder you can move, and the, the further up the ladder you go, the less crowded it is, and then your voice is going to be heard a lot easier, and your message is going to be listened to by a lot more people. Excellent. But you've got to be you've got to be willing to be you've got to be willing to be a bit controversial to get your message out there as well in the beginning, I think, and yeah. and, and, and ruffle a few feathers, and not be afraid of it. Yeah. Okay, I've got a few comments here, Paul. I don't know if you can see these or not, so I'm just going to no, uh, joke. Joseph O'Donnell says, I want to throw the ball. <laughs> Joe Donnell, oh, Jesus Christ. I, I hate that boy. What is your I love you. <laughs> and then Neil Dempsey, do you likes not pay the rent? Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> not that I know of. <laughs> oh, fuck. We always have a bit of crack in these things, Paul. I remember one time um, I was actually invited on a podcast, uh, a mutual friend. You'll remember this guy was in Australia. <laughs> and... Uh, He'd been sending a question. Do you remember doing that, me? You fucking. I can have some some sort of memory of this. <laughs> Where I am on this podcast, it was like it was one of these. Um, uh, do you know, like fucking a whole load of different trainers that were. It was on on their list with fucking Jamie Alder and a few other people, some big trainers. And then um, there I am doing this interview, and he says, "Oh, I've got a question from a mutual friend here, a dude called Paul Murray." Sent in a question. I was like, "Oh." For Fuck's sake, I know. And what is this going to fucking be? Because even when it said the Vida, she was like, oh, Paul Murray's coming on the show. I said, yeah. She goes, what do you think that's going to be like? I said, no fucking idea. I, I don't know what's going to come out of this fucking thing. John, what the fuck are you doing, John? Why are you fucking doing this? Are you crazy? You're fucking out of business to run. <laughs> I says, well, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be hard to predict what's going to come out of this one, but I think it's been fucking excellent to the truth. Um, but been yeah. very I've been very mannerful, so have I now. You've been, you've been cracking. You've been very professional. But um, you've had some really cracking points as well, Paul, deadly ones. Um, but this dude, here I am in this interview, and he says, right, so here we go, a question from Paul. He says, um, make sure you ask Sean about his elevator pitch. So is this true, Sean, that one time you sold a 50-year-old woman 100 Hondas in a lift? And I was going, what the fuck? <laughs> it was like, uh, no, no, I know who exactly who sent this question. This is from Paul fucking Murray in Belfast. And he said, yeah, it is, yeah. He's full of shit. Don't even listen. I can't believe you read that fucking question out. And he's like, "Oh, so did this not happen?" I'm like, "No, there was no woman in a fucking lift." <laughs> <laughs> I love shit like that. Man, you have to screw phone. Yeah, yeah. But um, what, do you know what I think? It is funny. Like it's ironic. Like I've been talking about this. Like you're, 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 you are where you are today, just because now Green and happened to introduce us together and ask you, ask me, could you let you train your one client? And yeah. I think that, to me, that's actually the most inspirational story you could tell anyone, because yeah. I had a gym. I had a gym. You, at this point. You were bankrupt. You said you, you had no, you had no business, yep. Nothing. and I didn't know you. And you just she now happened to be a, a mutual friend of us, Nal Greenham, and I happened to introduce you. And I just said, "Yeah, go ahead, train your client. Don't worry about paying me." Yep. And because of that one act, that one act, 
look who you got to now, and now you're coaching me. A hundred fucking cement, yep. It's crazy how that thing's happened, you know, but it, it, it just, just shows you, you know, okay, you, you, I helped you, now you're helping me. And it, it's it's people, I, people don't I, see I, that. No, I, I'll tell you what, I told this story to the, the personal trainer, because like every time a, a, a coach goes through the coaching certification, I give them a damn of time to just teach them about business and try and like give them over some of the information that's helped me along my career because I have a vested interest in them guys succeeding, you know, and that, that is one thing. I put that post up because I put a post and it's me just going, I guess, smiling in my gym saying there was this one time when I had only one client and then I popped the piss in. I didn't even have anywhere to train them. And I went to this guy I kind of knew, which was you. I told him this very fucking story and it's 100% true. Like I, I started a business and it's, it's kind of, it goes back to what you were saying there before. Like I started a business with one fucking client and then that went to two and then I went to three, and I built a business from the ground floor up, and it's taken me ten fucking years. Do you know? Do you know what you've done differently to every other trainer you did? And you told this other thing was actually know who it was, but I'm not going to mention the name. In um, peak physique. Yes. You, see, you tell that story all the time, but you walking in yep. going, look at these people. You had the balls to not worry about rejection. Yeah. Just walk up and ask people. Do you want a hand here? Can I show you this wee tip? Yep. And I think that's I think that's one of the things that that people PTs make the mistake of. We don't have to walk up and go, "Hey, what's your name? You love that? You love that?" Saying like, "Can I buy a drink? Do you want to fuck me?" You don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that's not how you do it. And that's what I think trainers think. Trainers think I have to walk up and go, "Can I train you?" No, you just walk up and go, "Hey, can I show you? I'm seeing you doing this. I've got a wee way that might help you just a bit better. Let me show you this. See mine. It's not. I'm not going to charge you for it, obviously." It's building that rapport up, having the having the balls to not fear rejection and just be able to walk up with a genuine interest and in helping people. Yep. And if you help them, they're going to maybe see value in what you've said and yep. they want more help. And that's when you can actually invest in your, but you can start evolving your business. But yeah, had, you not, had you not done that, you wouldn't have been having no clients. You wouldn't be here today. Yep. Yep. Fucking deadly. So there you go. If Paul hadn't fucking let me train my client there, this show wouldn't even be fucking happening. We wouldn't know that Insta trainers are full of shit, some of them. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's some are. Mad how life. It's my, mad how life works out. Yeah, it's fucking mental. That's, going back to what we're saying, like it's a journey. I mean, you got to play the long game here. I mean, putting in the hours to better yourself and investing in yourself, educate yourself so that you can better impact the people that you want to help. And learning that you're gonna business, you're gonna build a business from the ground floor up. You're not gonna walk into a gym and just suddenly have you know a full book of clients. It's going to take time, and you've got to be willing to put the time into that journey, don't you? The other thing I'd say, the last thing I'd say is definitely is see that journey, see the journey you're on. It's going to help full of experiences. You're gonna have life. Everything you do has got life experience. So how did you feel when you first started your business? You were nervous. You were terrified. Shit. That's exactly how your client's going to feel walking into, walking into the gym for the first time. They're going to be shitting themselves. Am I going to be capable of doing this? Am I going to look foolish? We've all, we all think like that when we're starting our businesses. Am I going to look stupid? Am I going to fail? And over time, you, you do make you do feel a lot and you, you make a fool of yourself a lot, but you learn from that. And you can you can then apply that to help your, your clients improve. You can, you can use those experiences to talk about that and go, listen, I know exactly how you feel. I was once blah, blah, blah. You know, if you, if you have your life experience and you're willing to be open and be honest about your feelings and not worry about, you know, showing vulnerability, yeah. you're, you're going to be, you're going to have a lot more rapport with, with your clients. It's just having that willingness to be vulnerable, showing, showing that you aren't infallible, like, like everything is going to, like everyone has flaws, everyone has faults, yep. and we all make mistakes. That's going to make a client who's nervous in the gym for the first time feel a lot more, a lot more home and a lot more confident in what they're doing. Yeah, that's fucking brilliant, man. Danny, right? I think we're going to have to end the show here because my you daughter is going to Paw Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you. Here, I'm going to speak to you soon anyway. Because remember, it's uh, 1 o'clock yes. he's speaking, right? No yes, problem. yes, no problem. I'll give you a shout right off this. Paul, thank yeah, you very yeah. much for coming on. That was like basically a full fucking mastermind there. I mean, <laughs> people do not, are not able to make uh, better posts, better engaging videos, talk to their avatars better after the result of this. I mean, fuck me. I don't know how we can help them anymore. It's oh, their fault, then. It's their, if they can't do it, it's their fault. No one else's. We have another, we have another comment here. Who, it's who's Joe. It's Joe. It's Joe. Oh, it's Joe. Oh, it's, it's, Joe. Joe. <laughs> or it's PJ or Slammy calling me out for not fighting PJ tomorrow night or tonight. 
Oh, someone's just saying that Neil Dempsey doesn't have any friends. So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So, Bob, okay, yeah. thanks a million. Thank you, thank you, buddy. See you later. Thanks, dude. And everybody, if you want to, you can catch the replay of this as well. If you want to see the video, if you're watching this on the podcast, this will be on YouTube. And for everybody in the EFPA coaches community, thank you very much. If you have any questions, stick them in and I will answer them below. For the people watching on YouTube or on the podcast, you can get this in EFPA Coaches Community inside of Facebook. Thanks very much for watching and we'll catch you next week on Friday Live 11.